Hey, we're on to the next part of electrical. We're going to try to get tangled up in some wires today. Um, we're going to be talking about how to install cable into boxes. We're also going to be talking about the different types of cable and where they'd be used. Alright, so looking at this board, you can see that there's a couple different types of cables on here. On the left hand side, this is all type NM cable or non-metallic. And the trade name is going to be Romex. So if you go into Home Depot, say Romex and they'll, they'll for sure know what you're talking about. The color of the different Romex denotes what gauge wire it is. So white Romex is going to be 14 gauge, yellow Romex is going to be 12 gauge, and then orange Romex is going to be 10 gauge. 14 is going to be one of the smallest wires that you can run through a house. Um, the, the larger the number, the smaller the wire. So 14 gauge wire is smaller than 12, and then 12 gauge wire is smaller than 10. So the larger the number, the smaller the wire. Okay, Each wire can handle so many amps. So a 14 gauge wire can handle 15 amps. A 12 gauge wire can handle 20 amps, and a 10 gauge wire it can handle 30 amps. So if you were installing a lighting circuit, that'd be a 15 amp circuit. If you were installing uh, maybe a kitchen appliance circuit, that would be a 20 amp circuit. And if you were installing maybe a dryer, then you would need a 30 amp circuit. Okay. If you notice right here, I wrote 14-2. 14-2 means it's 14 gauge wire, and there are two conductors. So you have a black and a white. Your black is your current carrying conductor, and then the white is your grounded conductor, and then you have your actually grounding conductor, which is also known as the ground. So um, in the field, this would be your hot, this would be your neutral, that would be your ground. NEC code, current carrying conductor, grounded conductor, grounding conductor. So that can get somewhat confusing there. Okay, But um, just a few, a quick recap. White is always 14 gauge, 12 is always yellow, and then 10 is always orange, um, and then make sure you know your amperages. If you see something like 14.3 right here, you'll have uh, two hots, so you got three, three conductors, one, two, and three. You do not count the ground wire, okay? So you have uh, two hots and then your neutral wire. This right here, this is uh, NEC, it's going to call it armored cable. Uh, trade name out in the field, you're going to call it MC cable. This would be an example of 10-3. Most commonly, you'd be running 12-2 to 12-3. Um, but I had a piece of scrap 10-3 laying around. As you can see, black, red, white, and then your ground. You also have a service entry cable, and um, this service cable is going to be would be installed into a meter or a panel. Here's a, a simple wiring schematic. Um, this will be for a welder that we just got done wiring up. On the schematic, you can kind of see that um, this would be your power coming in from your panel. This is actually going to the welder. Um, when you when you look right here, these L1 and L2, those are considered your hot wires. So that means you need two current carrying conductors. If you look right here, this is the earth ground, and um, that is going to be your actual ground wire, so that would be your green wire, and it is connected to a ground wire right here. So when we ran this, we ran two hots. Um, this had a black and a white um, because it's just SO cord, so that could kind of confuse people because you think you just need a, a hot, a neutral, and a ground coming from the panel, but no, this L1 and L2 are two hots, so we ran a black and a red from the panel and then a green wire as your ground, and we hooked it up to a disconnect, um, so the the black went to the black wire on the SO cord, and then the red wire from the panel went to the, um, went to the white wire on your SO cord. So just know that colors don't always mean that um, that it's a hot and a neutral but alright so right here is a simple hand drawn schematic this is what you're going to be wiring up today in class if you know right here I got the key right here the black wire is going to be a solid wire the red wire is going to be kind of a little squiggle the white wire is going to be your uh, dotted line 
Um, this little triangle is just going to denote a wire nut. So this is just a practice schematic just to get you used to um, reading a schematic and then actually doing it in the field. And we got 14.2 coming in on the top side. We got 14.3 coming in on the right side. 10.2 coming up from the bottom. And then 12.2 coming up on the left hand side. Um, if you know right here, the black wire is going to hook to your black wire on your 14.3 and also the red. So you'll make taps with those three wires. The white wire on the 14.2 will go to the white wire on the 14.3. The 10.2 will hook to the black wire um, of the 12.2 and then the two whites will hook together. Notice I didn't draw the grounds. Uh, we'll have another video coming up on how to actually ground boxes. All right, so as shown before, um, you get your wiring schematic right here. Okay, you're going to need 14-2. So I got a strand of 14-2. It's going to be coming in the top. I got a strand of 10-2. It's going to be coming in the bottom. I got a strand of 14-3. It'll be coming in um, your right mile left. And then I got 12-2, which is yellow. It's going to be coming in right there. So you need four... Uh, cable connectors okay so um, these are designed for half inch knockouts so when you install a cable connector um, the best thing to I found is either channel locks or um, or linemans you can tap it out so as you can see um, tap it out and then you can grab on the inside of your box right there and they just pop that out. Now you're probably wondering why it didn't go in the middle. That is a three quarter inch knockout. These will not work for a three quarter inch knockout. So make sure you only grab the half inch. Okay. When you install your cable connectors, insert them like so, and then put the lock ring on the back side. All right. Um, what the best way to do this is get them like get them about a quarter of a turn away from being tight and till you really can't tighten it anymore with your hands and then you can take um, take your channel locks right grab it and finish tighten them down it's a little bit harder for me to do since I'm working away from me towards the camera all right but you want to get it good and tight all right, and you'll do that on all four of your connectors. So you'll knock out your knockout. Okay, you can grab them, grab the knockout. Loosen your lock ring, stick it in there, tighten it down. tighten them all the way down. So one thing you need to make sure of, your screws should be facing outwards. In a real life scenario, I'll be on the other side working, um, but you need to be able to access those screws. So the screw heads should be facing the front of your box. Okay. Once you get it, um, once you get it in there, you can get your screwdriver, you loosen these up. And as a note, my 14.2 is coming in the top, so I'll grab my 14.2. 14.2 is a black, a white, and a ground. All right, now, uh, you need to strip your cable before you put it in there. So, NEC code requires six inches of wire in your box, okay? So, you need to remove all of the... Remove all the sheathing and all the paper. Okay. Now, when you stick this in, um, you need to feed it through there, and you want about, you know, you want some sheathing in there. Okay. As you can see, I got a little bit of sheathing in there. Um, a good, a good rule is probably about a half inch to an inch of sheathing. You don't want too much sheathing in there because it makes it very difficult to uh, wire when you when you actually get in there. So you'll do that with all four wires. You get all four in there. Just so 
So let's talk about uh, attaching, or let's talk about installing wires in a Romex box. So in a metal box, you got your Romex connectors. Um, if you're going in a panel, you could use Romex connectors or a disconnect. In a plastic box, you have these little tabs on the back side. You just slide your wire in through the back. Uh, make sure you got you know about an inch of sheathing in there. And then the main um, thing that's going to hold the wire in the box is your staple. You must staple. Uh, staple your wire within 12 inches of a box and then every four and a half feet. Uh, so even on a, a commercial metal box you would still need to staple within 12 inches of a box and then every four and a half feet. Alright here we go. So let's talk about grounding. So uh, when you're grounding a metal box, uh, we like to use a ground screw. There are multiple ways to do this, but for us, we use a ground screw. And you got your little, you got your little bubble right here. All right, um, it's really kind of hard for me to do because I got this wire in the way, but I got it. Okay, so uh, insert your ground screw right there. Take a piece of your uh, one of your ground wires doesn't matter which one make sure you wrap it on there clockwise okay um, you can either take some uh, some needle nose or something if you need to crimp it down um, I feel like that's on there tight enough where it won't come off and then you can tighten it down uh, with a 5 16 since it is a 5 16 and then um, so once you get it tight you can take all of your ground wires so all of your copper wires, if, if we are running pipe here, we'd have green wires. Um, but we'll take all of those right here. Alright, and you will take a pair of Lyman's and you'll tighten those up. So now that you got your grounds out of the way, you get your ground screw, your grounds, you can actually start wiring this schematic here. Okay, so um, you can take it and put it in front of you like so. I would take this 14-2 black wire and then I would attach it. It says it's going to the black and the red. So I would attach all three of these here. Remember when you make caps, the first thing you gotta do is strip about three quarters of an inch of wire. This is 14, so I'm gonna find my 14 hole. Strip about three quarters of an inch of wire off each one. And then I would make each tap. Okay. Now, when you are tapping these together, make sure you get them all the same length, and then...